What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, May 10th. Exciting week of trading this week. Implied volatility has improved significantly. We're going to review all the trades. This is exclusively for our pro members. Let's, uh, before we jump into the alerts, let's go to the community and talk about who got caught being hot. This week goes to our man Barat. Uh, Barat's been a member for a long time, a uh, couple of years, almost since the since the beginning of navigation trading. So it's been awesome to see him this week jump into the community and start sharing trade ideas, answering questions, and all that good stuff. So congrats, Barat. You got caught being hot. All right, let's jump into the alerts for the week starting on Monday the 6th. Had quite a bit of alerts this week. We were really busy with the implied volatility popping, the market going down. Uh, this is the, just the best time to trade when, when things are actually happening as opposed to a slow grind higher that we've been seeing most of the year. So good stuff. Hopefully more good stuff to come. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, starting Monday, the first alert was in DIA. So we added an iron condor in DIA in the June cycle with 46 days to expiration at that point. Uh, premium popped up. The IV percentile was at 65 at that point. Of course, it went even higher. So in hindsight, it would have been even better to wait, but we don't trade in hindsight. We trade in reality. So here's where it at. Here's where we're at. You can see IV percentile got as high as 73. Uh, excuse me, got as high as uh, 80. Now it's come down a little bit today, down to 73. So we put on another iron condor. So you can see we're still fairly centered, but we're down a little bit just because implied volatility has gone up since we put that on. But just holding that, waiting for some time to pass, and uh, you know, seeing if we can get some range-bound trading in the price of the stock. And so that's what we're looking at in DIA. Next trade was a closing trade in SPX. So we had a calendar spread on when implied volatility is really low. IV spiked up to 70. Price came down, centered, and we booked over 25% profit on that trade. So good trade in SPX. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in DIA. So at this point, we still had on uh, a short call vertical in the May cycle. Uh, when, profit, uh, when, when price came down, we were able to get back into range, closed out that remaining short call vertical. And then, of course, we're still holding that iron condor that I just showed you. Next trade, a rolling adjusting trade in SPY. So we had a short call vertical on pre from a previous iron condor. We went ahead and rolled that out from May to June. We kept the exact same strikes and just wanted to extend duration and keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio. So let's take a look at SPY. It's come down even more since then. So just, just holding this, waiting for some more downside potentially and to keep that short delta exposure. By the way, we were literally at the top end of our range of where we like to be with short delta to theta exposure. Uh, kind of that range we like to be in is that one to one up to about five to one in short delta versus our theta. And we were we were near that five to one. And in fact, went over it a little bit. I think it was last week, early last week. And then and now with this huge down move, this is how quickly things can change. Now we are about one and a half to one. So really close to our the lower end of that range. So uh, that obviously benefited our portfolio with that down move that we've seen this week. And uh, but now we're 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 back to uh, kind of a, a normal range. We, you know, ideally, we like to be in that kind of two to three to one, two to one or three to one. And we're about one to one right now. Uh, but still uh, still in good shape. So that's where we're at there. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in Natty Gas. So we've got two different short strangles on, two different pieces to this trade in Nat Gas. We went ahead and rolled one of them from June, which was at 22 days to expiration, rolled that out to the 50-day cycle. And we adjusted our calls down from 2.8 to 2.7, kept our put at the three strike. And so let's take a look at that one. And that's going to be our uh, 2.73 in uh, in the June cycle. And so that's what this one looks like here. Nat gas has come up this week. So since we did that roll, price was right here. Now it's up here. So we've made some profit since that roll earlier this week. So that's looking good. 
And then the other piece that we still have in Nat Gas is in the other uh, in the previous cycle, and you can see price is still right here, just a little bit out of our range. Now we are down to 18 days to expiration, so we're under that 21. So looking for a point to roll. All I'm waiting for is I was hoping, which did happen. Uh, hoping for a little up movement to get back into range. And and so we're going to wait. to. We'll probably do this on Monday. Hoping to get a little bit of a pop to uh, get back into range here before our roll. But even if we don't get back up, uh, we're going to go ahead and roll this anyway. And we'll just roll that out to the same cycle and keep that, uh, keep that trade going. So that's where we're at in Natty Gas. Next trade was a opening trade in ZB. So we've been out of notes, out of bonds for a while because implied volatility has been low, but IV percentile popped its head up in TLT. And so we sold some premium in ZB. As I mentioned, you could look at short strangles, iron condors in, in the notes, the bonds, TLT, the ETF, any of those is fine. We just opted for ZB this time because I like the leverage that it provides. Uh, you can see we're still pretty centered, pretty close to where we put it on. Uh, not much profit, uh, so we're just playing the waiting game in ZB. Next trade, opening trade in FXI. So again, just trying to sell some pr a little bit of premium each day uh, with this new implied volatility heightened that we that we're seeing. Uh, so we did this in FXI. Obviously, a lot of this heightened uh, uh, implied volatility is due to the trade wars between the U.S. and China. And so FXI is the Chinese large cap. And so seeing a, a nice pop in IV there. So we sold an iron condor in FXI. If we take a look at that, still fairly centered, uh, not much profit there. So just waiting for a little bit more time to pass, some theta to decay. You can see implied volatility really spiked in FXI. And so hopefully that's a uh, a good trade once kind of once things kind of settle down. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in ES. So we've had this long put vertical on that we're holding for that short delta exposure. Got down to May with nine days, so we're just looking for a point to roll with the down movement coming back into range. Made sense to do so. We kept the exact same strikes, and it's gone down even further since we've made the roll. So if we take a look at that. You can see this is where we're at. This is where price is right here. So again, just holding this for that short delta exposure. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade. This was yesterday on Thursday. Uh, we did this in Intel. So we had a short strangle on that we put on after earnings. And uh, because implied volatility was still heightened uh, with the rest of the market, price moved down. So we needed to roll down our calls. We, still, we stayed in the same cycle because we still have 43 days left. So we're not rolling out to July. All we're doing is rolling our calls down from 55 to 49. And so if we take a look at Intel, here's where we're at. So we rolled those down. Now price has gone down a little bit more. But remember, after if it goes through the break even after we've adjusted, that's not a trigger to adjust again. We're simply looking at the value in those calls. Uh, and you can see there's still plenty of premium in those calls. So we're just holding steady for now. Uh, we need a little bit of a bounce higher in Intel to benefit that trade. And you can see with the rest of the market, it's kind of flushed down to the bottom. So if we get a little bit of a pop higher, uh, we'll be in good shape there. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IWM. So we had a call vertical from a previous iron condor, and that was still in May. So with this down move in price, came back into range. Uh, booked a nice profit on our May iron condor overall, and then we're still just holding our full iron condor in June. So if we take a look at IWM, and it it didn't get hit as hard uh, as some of the other ind indices like the SPX, uh, the Dow, the the Nasdaq. It's uh, it's actually held a little bit stronger. The small caps have. So if we look here, still pretty pretty well centered in our IWM iron condor. With the heightened applied volatility, you can see we're down slightly on that trade just because the uh, price of the options has risen, uh, but still in great shape there. So just waiting for some time to pass. Next trade, a rolling adjusting trade in EEM. So we have this uh, uh, short call vertical in EEM. And we, uh, again, we just kept it in the same cycle because we've got a lot of time left. And all we were doing is rolling the spread down. And so if we take a look at that uh, EEM, 
Uh, you can see it's, it's actually popped up a little higher since we did that roll, but we're still well within range and just looking for a little bit more downside before we do anything in EEM. We're pretty close to break even on this trade. I think we're down slightly, probably about what we're showing here, maybe a little over $100. Uh, so just need some downside to benefit that. Next trade was an opening trade in VXX. And so this is just like we teach in the course about the VIX, uh, where if the VIX spikes, which typically means stocks are going down, then we can sell a call vertical on VXX. Remember, VXX is inversely correlated to stocks. And so what you're going to see is when stocks go down, VXX goes up. When stocks go up, VXX goes down. And, and the reason we like to do the short call vertical on this is because a lot of times it's got that downward drag on it because it's using futures contracts and continually rolling. So it's got an automatic downward drag. If you look over time, it's always going to be kind of dragging down. Now, in periods where applied volatility spikes, you're going to see that big spike up and then it's going to contract down. And so that's what we're trying to take advantage of. And in fact, so we put it on uh, yesterday on the 9th. This is where we entered and we already took it off today and booked over 40% of max profit in uh, you know just a, a couple days here, just overnight. So good trade there. So we are out of that a later, uh, a later alert here. Shows the exit. Uh, so we went ahead and booked that one. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in SMH. So we closed one set of our short strangles in SMH. Um, and so with the down move in price, that one came back. We were well over 50% on that piece of it. Uh, and so we went ahead and just closed that, reduced our exposure overall to SMH. And with Ivy High, we'll, we'll look to potentially add to this one again uh, if, if, uh, if it warrants it. But we're still holding this other piece, which is this slightly inverted strangle. Uh, but it's dead centered, uh, got a decent amount of profit back in that one since we've rolled. And we'll just continue to hold this one. If price kind of goes out and gets near one of our break evens, we may look to add another centered strangle around that, depending on where implied volatility is and what our other positions are doing. But that's where we're at in SMH. Next trade, opening trade in XBI. So today we're just looking to sell some more premium. XBI was a good choice here. IV percentile jumped up to 79. And so we just sold an iron condor, uh, kind of a tighter iron condor because XBI is a lower price symbol. It's under $100. So you don't necessarily want to go or need to go out to that 20 delta. You want to kind of squeeze that in to get enough credit to make it worthwhile. Uh, and, and so you can see price is still just dead centered, pretty, pretty close to where we put it on in XBI. If we look at a chart of XBI, you can see IV percentile popping up here. So uh, just selling some premium to take advantage of that higher priced option scenario. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So we had two sets of short call verticals uh, that were originally part of our iron condor trade. And we've rolled through a couple cycles just to keep that short delta exposure. Uh, in this case, uh, we're still in May for both of these. So I wanted to roll one this week and then we'll roll another one next week. We've got seven days as of today, Friday. We've got seven days left to expiration. So we rolled this one out to June and then we moved our strikes down a little bit to compensate for price. And so we just are extending duration and keeping that short delta exposure. Let's take a look at QQQ. So we've got these two pieces here, one of which is the one we just rolled. This is the one in June. So you can see prices right here. So just looking for some more downside to benefit that. And then the one that we've still got in May has come back into range nicely. These were way out of range here and they've come all the way back in. And so just we're gonna we're just we would just want to spread out these rolls so we're not doing it all in one day. Uh, we're letting price move around, time move around, and uh, kind of spread these out. So we'll roll this one next week since next week is expiration week. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XLK. So another another one of these where we're we were in June and we just uh, you know had well over fifty percent of our max profit. So just to kind of keep that profit line a little bit steeper. We went ahead and just rolled these to get our, we just rolled our strikes down uh, from 84.79 down to 80.75. And that keeps that short delta exposure in our portfolio in XLK. So if we take a look at that, 
Uh, it's actually price has gone up a little bit since we did the roll. So, but just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit that trade. And let's see, we got a couple more here. A lot of trades this more, more alerts this week than normal, and that's that's kind of that's pretty typical when you have a lot of motion going on. You're making you want to open trades when implied volatility is high. You're getting some prices come back, so you're being able to close out some for profits, and then and then of course the adjustments that are necessary. Uh, in this case, this was a closing trade in XLV, so we had an iron condor on here, booked over 40% of max profit. Price came down nice and recentered uh, on our uh, XLV trade. If we take a look at the chart, we see the nice down movement this week, and so came back into center, and we were at over 40% of max profit, so we went ahead and booked it. And then lastly, I already mentioned this, this was the VXX closing trade where we booked over 40% of max profit. Just, uh, it, you know, we entered it yesterday, took it off today, 40%. As I mentioned, we originally had a profit target of about 50% of max, but when you get it that quick, take the money and run. So that's what we did. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions here, uh, starting with oil. A uh, nice down movement in oil as well this week, which has helped our position. So we've got two different pieces here. We've got our, uh, let's see, actually, I think it's this one. I think I've got these strikes right. Uh, the 50, 60 and a half. Uh, no, 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 that's not right. It's this one. So we've got the 53, 60 and a half. And, and so you, see, you can see prices come back. Uh, gotten some profit back there. If we get back to center, if we get down to like 58, 57 or 58, we'll be back to the point of close to break even on our oil trade overall after that massive move that we've been working our way out of. So that's where we're at on that piece. And then the other one right here, uh, same story. Need a little bit of downside, but getting back to a point of almost profitability if we, if we we're, we're down about a couple thousand, but as you can see, just a few dollar move down will get us back to that point. So getting close there, just staying mechanical as always. Uh, I mentioned ES, I mentioned Nat Gas, I mentioned bonds, wheat. Okay, so we've got two pieces here. One is a short put vertical. So price came down on our iron condor, broke through our break even. So we closed out the untested side. Price has continued to move lower. Uh, earlier this week, yesterday actually, price was coming back. I thought it was going to make a move back into range, but now it slid back down today, down about a percent and a half. Uh, we've got, how much time do we have left? 14 days. So within the next couple of weeks, we will be making a move here. We'll either roll or just close this one out. And then we've got this other piece here, which is a full iron condor. And you can see we got a little bit of profit, but could also use a little bit of up movement there. I actually tried to get out of this for about a 40% profit, but I never got filled. It wasn't quite there. And, uh, and then it, it come, came back down a little bit. So hopefully next week we get a little bit of a pop higher. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to book this one and, uh, and it'll help our other piece as well. Apple. So a couple, couple thorns in our side are Apple and Facebook. And I, I, got, I got several questions about both Apple and Facebook this week. You know, they're saying, oh my God, you know, stocks are breaking down. Should we get out of this? Should we get out of this? Well, no. I mean, we're going to let the probabilities play out. And the fact is, we had those on to help balance our overall short delta to theta ratio. So those are long delta plays. And so those were helping us balance those. The fact that they went against us means the rest of the, a lot of the rest of the portfolio went in our favor. So net net, it's a, you know, been a very profitable week. Uh, but Apple here, you can see, I'm just, I'm going to see if we can get a little bit of a bounce into next week and we might just close that out or we may continue to roll it. Uh, we'll see what happens. We put this on uh, after, you know, they had earnings, went up above the expected move. We got a profit, a quick profit there. And then we tried to re-enter thinking it was going to, you know, another continuation of the upside. But that's when uh, the trade war talk came out and, and made the price go down. And so now we're just holding it, uh, but we've got, this is in May, we've got, you know, seven days. So we're going to do something with it next week. We'll, depending on where we're at in our overall portfolio, we'll either roll or just close it for a loss. We'll see what happens. Uh, DIA, I mentioned that one. EEM, I mentioned. Facebook, pretty similar situation here. 
where prices come down. We need some upside movement in Facebook to get back into range there. And this was a very similar trade. We were just looking for a continuation to the upside, but then price kind of fell down. Uh, so we'll see what happens next week, and we'll deal with that then. I mentioned FXI. I mentioned Intel, IWM, IYR. This is the real estate ETF. Uh, the real estate's held up quite a bit better than uh, other stocks here, so um, didn't get hit as hard on the downside. And we've got this iron condor here, and so we're just waiting for some more time to pass before we do anything there. KRE, we put this short strangle on. It's still fairly centered here. No profit or loss, just waiting for some more time to pass in that one. NVIDIA, we've got this short call vertical on. Got uh, got more than 50% of max profit here, but I just wanted to give this one over the weekend to see if we get a little bit more downside or what's going to happen in NVIDIA. We're still down slightly on this trade overall after adjustments. Um, they announced earnings on 516, so that's next week. And so we'll be we'll be doing something. We may, I mean, we may consider holding it through tr uh, through earnings. We'll just see where everything's at with the rest of our portfolio. Um, you know, if it if it does make a sharp move lower into next week, we'll probably just close it out, and we'll end up taking a, a small loss overall. Uh, if it moves higher, we may consider rolling, going through earnings. We'll we'll just have to see where our deltas are with the rest of the portfolio as well. QQQ, I mentioned that. SMH, I mentioned. SPY. Walmart, we've got a pre-earnings long call here that we're uh, close to taking off at one point, and then, and then price fell down. It's coming up today. It's up over a percent today. Uh, Walmart announces earnings on 516 before the market, so we want to be out of this one by 515. And so if we can get a quick pop higher in the next week, we might just scratch this trade if we get back up to about the 103 level. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, we need to get up to about right here to scratch that trade. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Might end up taking a loss on it, or who knows? Could explode higher. Never know. Uh, XBI I mentioned, XLK I mentioned, and then lastly, XRT, the retail ETF. We've got a short strangle on here. After all adjustments, we're up a couple hundred bucks on this trade. Uh, just waiting for a little bit more downside, a little bit more theta decay before we jump out of this one for a profit. Uh, hopefully it doesn't shoot higher on us, but uh, that's where we're at on XRT, and we'll play it as needed. If implied volatility does stay high and it gets close to our break even, we may look to add to that, center it around uh, wherever price is at that point, uh, but we'll see what happens in XRT. So... That's all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.